Hi friends, most of you guys already know me. My name is Manuel Flores and I'm doing my technology tool exploration on Kahoot. And the reason I'm doing it on Kahoot is because I believe that this resource is such an amazing tool to use inside your classroom to keep your students engaged, active, all while having fun at the same time. It gets them thinking, it gets them to kind of move around, and it's just a great way to help build on the, that team building um, experience for them. It shows you your leaders, it shows you the students that are competitive, and it just gives you an array of different types of learning with Kahoot and I just I love it and I hope that you're able to find this um, as exciting as I do when I use it in my classroom. So what is Kahoot? Kahoot is a free game based learning platform used by millions of people around the world every day to discover, create, play, and share learning games. You have to have the creativity to you know, mesh all of that in there and just showcase it for your students. Um, one of the things that makes Kahoot so unique is that it is a platform where you decide on the content, the imagery, and how the game is played. This is a great tool to use for your ELL students, but also for any student who is a visual learner. Um, it's gonna fit the needs of so many different students. The platform is designed to make learning fun, but it's not just for the classroom. You could take this game anywhere you like. You could take it at home. You could use it in any um, social activity you're in or in any organization you work for. Uh, Kahoot does come with different Kahoot plans. There's the basic one that is free, that has certain um, you know, avail availabilities to it. You can't access everything that it comes with, but the free version will do just fine. Um, it's not crazy expensive. It's super cheap. You would have to check with your school district to see if they're willing to spend the money on it. If not, you could do it yourself. I just think it's a great investment for yourself and for your students as well. Kahoot comes with different subjects, so it's not just primarily uh, based on one. It's all of them. You have math, science, English language arts, social studies, general knowledge, literature, and history. You also have uh, different partners, which is Disney, Marvel, National Geographic, uh, Merriam-Webster, the Disney Imagination Campus, like all of these different uh, partners that are connected with Kahoot, you have access to. And those are mostly like trivias, which is just another fun way to have your students, um, to get your students to stay engaged and allow them to have fun at the same time. So when I work on this with my students, I did this at the first, um, kind of the first week of school, getting to know them. I was able to cover three Arizona State standards in ELA, and we did ours on English language arts review. Um, grammar with 32 questions. Just wanted to see where they were at. Give me an, it'll give me an idea um, as to how much they were able to retain from last school year and what I need to reteach them. So Kahoot is a, a, an amazing way to use as an assessment tool, both informal and formal assessment. And we'll go over that uh, as we go through these slides. So there are different types of Kahoot. The first one is a quiz. So the quiz is the quiz features are like assigning right or wrong answers and toggling points on and off. When a quiz is played, there will be a scoreboard between questions to show the current top scoring players. That gets really competitive when the students are able to see who's in the lead and how they can get themselves, you know, to that top position. You use quizzes to introduce new topics review recently learned material, and ultimately 
add that fun and rewarding experience to their learning. You have Jumble, which is the same uh, as a quiz. It offers the same competitive play. This one is only on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Jumble questions come with a twist by challenging players to place answers in the correct order rather than selecting one correct answer. So in the quiz, you could do multiple choice questions or you could also do um, one of those type in question answers so that your students will have to type it in and it'll send it to the smart board and you'll see their answers as they come in. The next one is the discussion. I think this one is pretty amazing. If you're in the middle of a lecture or a presentation and want to quickly ask a spur of the moment question, you can, and it's gonna record the response for you to look at it later and just get an idea of where your students are at and how you could uh, use this analysis for your future plans. Uh, it's identical to a survey, but with a limited uh, of only with the limit of only one question, and it can also be used as a check for understanding during your lesson. So you could have Kahoot in the background. Your students are logged in uh, via their game code, and as you're teaching, you could ask your students a question. They could type it in, send it to the smart board. And again, you're just seeing everything that's coming up. So that gives you an idea to either stop and slow down if your students aren't comprehending, or it's gonna show you their understanding, we're good to go, and you move on. Kahoot for assessments. This is a great one. I love Kahoot for assessments. So on this screen, this is what I was able to get out from my students when we played. 53% um, got everything correct. It'll show you difficult questions. It looks like there were eight difficult questions that my students were having um, trouble with. It shows that three of my students need help. Five of them didn't finish. Um, the whole game took us 25 minutes, 32 questions, and 25 players, which 25 um, students my, of the students that I have. So it breaks it down for you. I could go in there, look at the results, and see what questions were uh, difficult and how can I kind of use that towards my advantages to better my lesson for them. Uh, Assessment-wise, it could be used as a quick pulse check. Kahoot can help you assess how the class feels about a topic and find out how students are really doing. So again, it's giving you all that information right at the end of the game. So it's super quick, super fast. You're gonna love it. You're pre-assessing the knowledge that they have. So you gotta gather insights that will help you plan for your future lessons in the best possible way. And it's gonna be aligned with where a class currently stands. So again, once the game is over, it's gonna give you this breakdown of where your students um, are at and what you need to kind of review if anything needs to be reviewed. And then you go to review content, engage students with content review in class and at home and identify topics that need reteaching. So the assessment with Kahoot, it's just a great way to showcase what your students are learning, what they're comprehending, and how you as their teacher can better equip them for success. How can you differentiate the learning if they're struggling with it? This Kahoot will help you uh, plan that out. This is a quick demonstration of how Kahoot is used. You have the screen, and then you have the cell phone, which the students will be on. They could either use a laptop, a Chromebook, or a tablet, whatever your school district has to offer. So we're gonna go on to team mode. You're gonna get into your team, so you're gonna break up your students into any team that you would like. Um, and also keep in mind that before you start this, you wanna go over your um, rules and expectations, what you expect from them, and how can we create a positive, safe, learning environment while also having fun. So after selecting team mode, you will see this screen. It will stay here a few seconds and then give the game pin. That will be your game pin. 
your students will enter the game pin as soon as they log in as a student and when they see uh, that access where it'll read game pin you're they're just going to type in those numbers and they're automatically going to be entered into the game already so once they're there they've entered the pin they're going to create that team um, game again you want to make sure that you're letting them know what your expectations are so we want to make sure that we're giving them uh, an idea of what type of appropriate team names we can use inside the classroom. It will then ask you to enter the initials of the team members, so everyone that's on that team, um, just so you can keep track. Uh, at the bottom, you're going to click the box that says ready to join. That's going to be available once everybody is on that team. Once you're done, you're going to click start. And then the question will be displayed. So the question is only displayed on the screen, not on the student's electronic device. Um, they only get to see the options of the answers and go from there. So they're going to see this on the screen. Um, it's going to give them the question. So in this case, what year did Oklahoma become a state? They have the four options, um, each different colors, different shapes, so that they could see and kind of get an idea of the different types of answers that they have, the options. Um, it also times them, so they have a certain amount of time to get this um, entered and correct. So users will answer based on the color and shapes. Uh, they, will, they don't get the answer on their phone. It all stays on the screen. They can only answer it by the color and the shape of what they see on their electronic device. At the end of the game, the students are going to be placed on a podium in a sense from first, second, and third place. This is the fun part because the students get excited to see who won. And at the school I work at, I'm able to give house points. So I use that um, to my advantage and, you know, I get the games excited. The games, I get the students excited on playing and participating so that they're able to get their house um, points. So you want to go ahead and click on get results at the end of the game. Once you know you see the game is over, I'm just going to ask you what would you like to do next. You're going to click save results so that you save all that um, data and you get to see you know where your students were struggling, what they were able to accomplish, and what you might need to go back and reteach. You have different options to kind of review this. You can look at it directly uh, by download, downloading it directly into your computer or saving it directly to your um, Google Drive. And the neat part about Kahoot is that it's connected to your Google Drive. So anything that you want to get done with it, you can do it via Google Drive and adding it to your Google Classroom. So if you want to take this virtually, you absolutely can. You could go ahead and create a classroom in your Google Classroom, enter this as an assignment, uh, get that classroom code generated, and send it out to your students. That way, they see it at home. They could log in and join us, and all while all at the same time having fun. You know, from their home, you could be in the classroom, and it's going to give you the same thing. You get the classroom code, your students will enter it into their electronic device, and the game will begin. This is um, kind of a different scoring data sheet. On the bottom, you'll see the different types of um, tabs that you could choose on, and it's going to give you uh, the data that you need to kind of see where your students are at. Um, again, who is going to break it down for you in the most um, readable part that you can ever get. It's going to be so easy for you to understand. It'll break it down for you to show you the different types of, um, of reports to see where your students land and how you can better differentiate that learning into your um, lesson plan. 
how are you going to um, break it down for them in a way that they could understand it for the next time you play this. So when I do it again, I'm going to use the exact same Kahoot that I used in the beginning of the school year. I might use it in the middle of the school year to see where they stand at now. So I highly recommend using this and if you need any help with it or if you need, you know, some more explanation, go ahead and reach out. But other than that, that's it on my end. Thank you, friends.